You know, there, there are many things that we can talk about all day long. But the truth is, it's really important to understand this. The truth is that we only have a little bit of time to talk about this today. And I was looking at this, and as we focus on it, I need to remind you that these are the Gospels. And we're in Luke. We've got one more Gospel to go, John. And then we're into the practical application of God's Word. But as we read the Gospels, it is a good thing to really listen because God is speaking to us, beloved. It says in verse nine, chapter, or chapter nine, verse one, it says, and he called the 12 together and gave them power and authority. Jesus Christ called the 12 disciples together and he gave them power and authority. Now, I think it's important that we recognize where their power and authority came from, Jesus Christ. Did you hear that? Jesus Christ gave them power and authority. See, we don't have power and we don't build our power and authority from education or from this or from that. But we understand Jesus Christ and the clearer we understand him and work toward learning about the kingdom of God, the more authority and power God gives according to our seeking him. That's very important. Get your Bible guide. Turn to today's passage. If you don't have it, use the addresses on the bottom. Also, you can go to www.biblediscoverytv.com. When you go there, click on donate, make a donation in any amount. We pray, pray about it and ask God what he would have you do. Thank you so much for giving if you have already. That is excellent. Look at this. This is something. We have ways of truth that God uses to tell us things. The, the best way to put this, Jesus Christ example. Jesus is going to tell us, going to give us an example. Now, this is something else because we're reading Luke 9 to 10. And as we go through the Bible, we're reading Luke 9, 1 to 11 today. Father, I want to pray as we look at this that you would help us to understand it through the power of the Holy Spirit and through Jesus Christ. We need to know what you're saying and why you're saying it so that we can read it and understand and apply it in our lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. Now. As we focus on this, look at verse 1 of chapter 9. It says, Then he called his 12 disciples together, and he gave them, he gave them power and authority over all demons. There are demons today. Yes, there are. And to cure disease. There are diseases today. Yes, there are. They had power and authority over them. And then he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And here's what he said to them. Quote, take nothing for the journey. Neither staves, nor bag, nor bread, nor money. And do not have two tunics apiece. Don't do that. He said, whatever house you enter, stay there. And from there, depart. And whoever will not receive you, then when you go out of that city, shake the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. Shake the dust from your feet as a testimony against them. So they departed and went through the towns and preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. This is his disciples. Can you believe that? Jesus Christ commands us as his disciples today to deliver his message to everyone. It's simple. You know, you can't go through life. I, you know, there are people that tell me, well, I'm, I'm a Christian and I, I'm a Christian really good in my home, in my basement with my food that I got for the next six years. Hold on a minute. God doesn't say get food that will feed you for 20 years and get a generator. He, he says, go tell people who I am. Go tell them that I can come and save their lives. Tell the world, every creature, tell them all. Isn't that interesting? It means we don't get to hide in the basement. We have to tell people, get out there and, and make friends and tell them who our, the, the Lord of our life is, Jesus Christ. That's very important. Now, let's go on to the next scripture. It says, now Herod the Tetrarch heard that all was done by him. He heard it all. And he was perplexed because it was said by some that John had risen from the dead and by some that Elijah had appeared and by others 
that one of the old prophets had risen again. And Herod said, well, John, I have beheaded, but, but who is this whom I have heard such things? So he sought to see Jesus. Herod, isn't that something? Now, look at this. Herod, the Roman tetrarch, heard about Jesus Christ and wanted to see him. Many want to see God, but they do not accept him. Jesus Christ appeared to the people who believed, the people who wanted to hear the Son of God, the people who knew, who really, truly wanted to know who God was. Herod, he just was interested in the miracles and all that stuff. He wanted to see Jesus. God would not do that till just before his resurrection. We'll get to that. Now we go back to Luke chapter 9, verse 10. It says, And the apostles, when they had returned, they told him, that all that they had done. Then he took them and he went aside privately to a deserted place belonging to the city called Bethesda. Jesus wanted to talk to his disciples, but you know what happened? But when the multitudes knew it, they followed him. The multitudes won't leave him alone. And he received them and he spoke to them about the kingdom of God. And he healed those who had need of healing. Jesus would not stop ministering. You see, God heals those who seek him for healing. Because God hears when we call him. God never turns anyone down who is truly seeking the Lord. And I have heard a lot of people tell me they think they've committed the unpardonable sin and all that. And I just tell them, you know, if you're worried about it, don't even worry about it. You're not even close. Come to Jesus. Say, Lord, I need you in my heart. I need you to be real in my life and remove the excuses. And Jesus Christ will come into your heart. He will come into your life and your life will be totally transformed. Now, it'll take some time because you see, there is a miracle moment of salvation, but then there's a lifetime of sanctification. What do I mean by sanctification? I mean, when God saves you and you make a decision, you decide to repent and say, Lord, I've sinned and I don't want to do any sin anymore. I, want to, I need some help. Well, of course, because the culture, the world is a sinning world. God helps you to grow. And that's sanctification. He pulls you out of the sin slowly but surely. And you begin to get better and you begin to resist sin because it's your enemy. And you begin to say, Lord, help me, help me, help me. And God does, does, does every step of the way. Beloved, as you get closer to the, the life's ending, you, you come to the place where you recognize that Jesus Christ really did help you. In fact, Jesus Christ is right there. And when you pass away, you're going to see him face to face. Thanks for watching. Remember, check out the full episode of Quick Study and follow us on social media. Start your daily devotional today.